time is our biggest resource. And in this video, I'm gonna show you seven ways in which I've used apps or features to save hours and hours and days and days of time just doing normal workflow type stuff like reading emails and listening to podcasts. Starting with number one, listening to podcasts. I use Pocket Casts to listen to podcasts and I've been using this app for years and years. But you can see here how many hours I've saved just using the features within Pocket Casts that have really helped me save time without even realizing it, to be honest with you. The best feature on here, which I haven't been able to find on any other podcast player, is the trim silence feature. There are different strengths to trim silence, but basically any silent time between the podcasts are naturally trimmed down. So you don't really even notice. It sounds really fluid, but what you're doing is you're saving time each time you listen to a podcast, even if it's just a few seconds. Over time, you can see that has accumulated to days and days and days of time not spent listening to to silence. I keep the trim silence on the mild setting each time. Now that to me is staggering that just the simple act of listening to things has saved me time. And I'm not talking about listening to things on double speed or triple speed because I find that really hard to follow. But let me know in the comments below if you actually listen to things in double speeds because I, I really can't focus when it's so fast. It's the fact that developers thought to put this stats page into the app in the first place, I think is genius. Next up is image creation. And there are different types of AI image creators out there, but the best one I found is Copilot. You can basically tap into the Copilot designer engine and get it to create almost anything that you can imagine. There are no watermarks. It's pretty quick and intuitive. I mean, sometimes it can take its time, but you know, it's a free tool. And the results are surprisingly pretty good. You can give it a number of prompts to adjust the image if you don't like what it initially spits out. And I just think it's really awesome for a free tool. What more could you want? It doesn't give you like a 16 by nine or customizable aspect ratio of the image. It just gives you a square image. And so that's really the only limitation of it. But I've used this for work. I've used this for my videos. Basically anything that I would have thought to have tried to Photoshop in the past, I now can just use this and I don't need to try and Photoshop like a MacBook Air tied to some balloons. Try it out and let me know what you think in the comments below. Next up is just general writing. And for general writing, I use Notion AI. And the reason I use Notion AI and not ChatGPT or any of the others is because Notion AI specifically looks at the content that I've got in my Notion instance. So I keep all of my book highlights and my web highlights in Notion. So I can very easily go into my book highlights and ask it to summarize things for me. Ask it to take information from the information I already have instead of just random information from the web. For example, if I want to create a YouTube script for a book that I recently read, Stolen Focus, I can really easily do that and ask it to bullet point script it for me, make it funny. It's just really, really intuitive, really easy to use. And it saved me a bunch of time when scripting YouTube videos. I've used it for work. I've used it to write LinkedIn posts. And it's not perfect like any other AI generative tool, but it gives you a good starting point in which you can then build and tweak and make it your own. But I think if you already use Notion or if you're thinking about starting to use Notion, it's well worth trying. There is a free trial of it. Give it a go, because once I started the free trial, I definitely got sucked into it. And I can say it saved me hours and hours of brain energy and time trying to get started, just get something moving to start with the momentum. That's often the hardest part of doing anything, right, it's to, to start it. Next up is email. And for email, I've started using Canary Mail, which is tapped into the Copilot engine. It's all kind of part of the same family. And Canary Mail is really, really smart. Email management on it is great, which is ultimately what you want it for. But it also adds AI features like summarizing emails for you. So if you've got a long email thread, you just hit the summarize button at the top. And it does a really good job of summarizing what this email is about and just giving you like the, the pertinent points. It can also quickly respond to emails. And when you hit reply, you can give it a text prompt to give it an idea of what kinds of things to to say, or you can just hit positive or negative and it will generate some kind of response, which is often actually just all you need to do. If you're getting tons of emails, I think it'd be especially useful. But for me, it still saved me hours and hours of time trolling through threads of emails, trying to remember what they're about. Just the ability to be able to summarize is incredible. Next up is web searching. And for web searching, I've stopped really using Google search. I now use Perplexity. And Perplexity describes themselves as the world's most powerful answer engine. Simply just 
ask it a question and it will bring you a lovely summary with all of the different sources that it's citing from within the text as well. So you can clearly see where it's getting its sources from. You can also customize the sources that it is taking information from. It's really, really great because it's it kind of validates where it's getting the information from, which is reassuring to me when I want to know something, I kind of want to know where it comes from. I think it does a great job with answering most questions. Actually, it's so good. I've started using it as like a news app where I can just log in each morning and have a look at what the trending topics are and just click on it. And it will just give me like a very quick summary, just the bits that I need to know. And it's really useful because half the time we don't need to trawl through Wikipedia pages to find information. Can just give it to you there and then, and then you can move on. And that in itself has saved me tons and tons of time. Next is file searching and navigation. And for that, I've been using the Apple feature of Spotlight. You can find it on iPhones, iPads, Mac devices, but you can also use Alfred or Raycast. Actually, if you're on an Apple device, Spotlight is really, really good now. It's really quick and it's totally changed my workflow. So if you hit command space, or if you're on your phone, if you swipe down from the home screen, you can pretty much search for anything on your phone. I pretty much discarded all of my apps from my screens on my phone. I've got one home screen, anything and everything else is just in an app library. And if I wanna find something, I will literally just swipe down and search for it. It means that I don't need to navigate pages and pages and folders and folders of things to find stuff. And I've just trained my brain to always go to Spotlight when I need something. It's just made my workflow so much quicker. It's made me more efficient. It's not just for finding stuff too. You can do conversions, you can do calculations, you can do Google searches on it too. And a really handy shortcut I found when using Spotlight is to hit Command B and it will automatically open up Safari and open up a Google search when you've typed something into the Spotlight bar. If you're on the Mac, there's also a syntax you can use to really hone in. So if you just wanna search for PDFs or if you just wanna search for your notes or find the folder, you can do that. And also you can run shortcuts from Spotlight, which brings me on to shortcuts. For me, I'm all about automating my life. Whatever I can do to cut down on mundane, repetitive tasks, I will try and find a shortcut that will just mean that I don't need to keep clicking through stuff and tapping on my screen. For example, when I'm doing focus work, I always listen to lo-fi music on my external speaker. Now I could, and I was, opening up the music app, finding the speaker as an airplay destination, finding my playlist, and then hitting play on the song. And in four or five taps, I would get my music on my speaker. With a Siri shortcut, you can literally do that in one tap. And that's a very basic example, but provided you create these shortcuts and put them on widgets on your home screen, you can can just tap away and automate everything that you're doing. Another good one I have is when my phone connects to my car's Bluetooth, I get a prompt saying, do you want to put the house alarm on? And then I can run that if I want to. Or when I dock my device in the evening to charge, it automatically puts my house alarm on downstairs and turns off all my lights. It's difficult to quantify just how much time all of these things are saving me. By reducing the friction and streamlining your workflow, using shortcut automations and shortcuts, you you can use your time to do more productive work. So those are the seven ways in which I have managed to save myself tons and tons of hours each day. Let me know in the comments below if any of these apps or features have been useful to you. And actually feel free to share if there are any apps or any features that have been useful in streamlining your workflow and saving you time. And if you like this video, please hit the like button for the algorithm. And if you want me to be your personal productivity coach, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, stay productive.